Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I'm training to become stronger. Because let's face it, we all want to grow up to be the most badass versions of ourselves as possible. My hero also dreamed of glory when he was younger. And through perseverance, and I mean, let's face it, he was lucky enough to be born into an important family, he managed to become a revolutionary hero. Born September 6th, 1757 in Chama, France, Marie Joseph Paul Gilles Roche Gilbert du Marquis, better known as simply the Marquis de Lafayette, had one hell of an impressive name, and more importantly, fought in the American Revolutionary War and helped structure France politically during a time of extreme tension. For his involvement in both the American and French Revolutionary Wars, he received the nickname Hero of Two Worlds. Lafayette grew up ambitious and wealthy. His father was killed in the Seven Years' War, and his mother and grandfather, well, they both died when he was 12 years old, leaving Lafayette orphaned with a considerable amount of money. When he turned 13 years old, Lafayette became a part of the Musketeers which included presenting himself to the king and marching in all kinds of parades, uh, mostly ceremonial. Um, at the age of 14, Lafayette joined the royal army and by 16, he married the prominent Marie Adrienne um, Francis de Noyes, a member of an important and wealthy French family. So why did Lafayette decided to help the colonies in their fight for independence. First of all, Lafayette was a Frenchman. In France, in Britain, that animosity between the two for centuries. Second of all, the American cause was romanticized. For those who fought, they were fighting for not only glory, but for the ideals of freedom and enlightenment, such as consent of the governed. Lafayette encountered the Duke of Gloucester, who over dinner spoke sympathetically about the colonists' struggles, which piqued Lafayette's interest. Not long after, Lafayette and several other Frenchmen landed in the colonies. At first, Congress refused Lafayette's services when he showed up in Philadelphia. He was stubborn and willing to fight as a volunteer without pay, an act that many admired. Uh, though he was young and without much experience, Lafayette became appointed a major general in the Continental Army through his tactics and through, you know, the aid of the French. Lafayette played a big role in a part of the American Revolution and helped secure victory. Later on, Lafayette rejoined the French army and organized agreements with Thomas Jefferson, good old TJ, uh, who was the, uh, the American ambassador to France at the time. Uh, knowing that tensions were rising and uh, that France was about to face a considerable amount of upheaval, Lafayette got involved and uh, fully drafted the Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen. Uh, hoping to create a government which represented the, uh, the first, uh, the, the second, and the third estate of France. Lafayette had an obligation to protect the royal family, including um, Marie Antoinette, who was, well, not the biggest fan of him. Um, obviously, this placed a huge um, strain on him, and he was put in a very vulnerable position, uh, to say the least. Uh, short after, he fled France, and he found no freedom. Because directly after that, he was captured by Austrian forces, and put, well, he was, uh, 
is put in prison. So, rough times. And um, likewise, his wife, um, Adrienne, was arrested in France. Um, later moved to the same prison as Lafayette in Austria while their son was sent to live with George Washington. Um, I think he got the better end of the deal. Uh, Lafayette and his family only found freedom when Napoleon offered their release. Consistently, Lafayette spoke out against Napoleon. He voted against Napoleon um, and his consulship uh, after the Battle of Waterloo. Uh, Lafayette hoped that Napoleon would abdicate and just kind of go away. The Marquis remained politically active until the very end. He took part in the July Revolution, which ultimately brought Louis Philip to the throne. Lafayette, uh, he died May 20th, 1834. A firm believer in the representative government. Now, uh, you excuse me. I, uh, I kind of, uh, gotta get back to training.